What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing another modification to my 2016 Harley Davidson Road King. And what we're going to be doing today is swapping out the handlebar setup that I currently have and going back to a set of ape hangers. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video, I put on a set of 10 inch risers with a set of drag bars that has about a three and a half inch rise. So the total was about 13 to 13 and a half inches. Now this current setup is really not that bad. It's actually fairly comfortable and it's pretty easy to steer and manage the bike, but it's just not my style. I've had ape hangers for many years and switching over to this more sporty style, it's okay. It's just not my style. I really am not super comfortable with it. I don't like my hands being down that low. I like my hands being a little bit higher, kind of more shoulder height is where I'm most comfortable. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get this started. Okay, so basically here's what we're gonna do. We are going to have to extend our wires and extend our cables. Now I did order a cable kit. It should be here tomorrow. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of this started today. And then once the new cable kit comes in, we'll get everything extended and hooked back up and we should be good to go. So the first thing I did was take my detachable windshield off, which is sitting over there. And then the next step is we have to take apart the headlight and the headlight assembly so that we can actually gain access to the bolts that holds our risers on. And real quick, when I put this bar set up on, I did already go ahead and swap out the stock bushings with a set of Arlen Ness polyurethane bushings. So that's already been done. So I don't have to do that on this handlebar swap. But I just wanted to let you know, I did that already. And if you wanna see how I did that, go check out the video where I installed these and I'll show you how I did that. So let me go ahead and start taking this all apart and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we went ahead and I got the existing risers and handlebars off. I then had to go dig out my original factory handlebar clamp here. I loosely bolted the top clamp on so that I could keep the bottom clamps even side to side so that the top clamp slides on. And that way when I put my bars on, all the holes line up so I could put my bolts back in. So everything's pretty much tightened down and ready to go. Now I just gotta go ahead, take off all of the packaging from the bars and then I'm gonna bolt the bars down to the top clamp, set them into position, and then sit on the bike and test it out and just get a feel for my hand height, then I'll continue moving forward. However, to move forward, I will need to extend my wires and extend my cables. So let me continue doing that and we'll be right back. Okay, and just so you know, the kit that I went with is the B30-1171. There are two versions of this kit, so make sure you get the right model number. The B30-1171 is for the Road King without ABS. They make another code that actually is for the Road King with ABS. And this kit will come with everything you need to extend your control wires, your throttle by wire, it'll have the extended clutch cable, and it'll have the extended brake line. So I just wanted to point that out. So if you happen to have a Road King without ABS, you might want to check out the B30-1171. So the first thing you want to do is just pick one of the cables, whether it's your brake line cable or your clutch cable or even just the wire harnesses. Start with one thing at a time, unplug it, and then go ahead and extend it. Okay, so we're going to start working on the clutch side over here. So if we just kind of lift this up right here, once you create a little bit of slack in your line, you compress your clutch. There's going to be a little white tab right here okay, that you're gonna pop out the bottom and that'll allow this cable to detach from the housing here. So we're just gonna let that sit there for a minute, okay? Okay, so now, when we're gonna be changing out the clutch cable that wraps from the left side of the bike down under the bike over to here, we need to take this lower transmission cap off because that's where the clutch cable gets attached to. Now, when doing this, I always recommend Take the plug out from right underneath this, underneath the bike, there's an opening in the pan. Drain out your transmission fluid, and then when you're all done, fill it up with fresh transmission fluid. It's very easy. Now, you don't have to do this. You could just take this cap off, and then any transmission fluid that comes out that was in here, drain that out. Once you do it all, go ahead and top it back off. But I would recommend draining it from the bottom, then go ahead and change out your clutch cable, 
Then on this bike behind this metal cap, there's an actual sealant gasket that looks like this. I would recommend buying one of these from you know, your local Harley store and just replacing that because anytime you take this off, you should replace your gasket as well. They're not very expensive, so go ahead and do that. Then once you're all done hooking up your new extended clutch cable, you put your gasket back on, you put some blue Loctite on your bolts, you bolt everything back down. Then you can go ahead and remove this plug right here and then fill up with some genuine Formula Plus Harley-Davidson transmission fluid and just pour the whole cord in and you'll be good to go. Okay, so right now I just pulled my plug out the bottom here, which is right up under here to drain my transmission fluid. So I'm just gonna let that drain for a little while into my pan. So once all of your transmission fluid has finally drained out, you want to make sure you replace that O-ring on your plug here. Now I always buy stuff like this where it's just a pack of O-rings to where I have extras laying around because anytime you start pulling these drain plugs out, you wanna make sure you're changing that O-ring out to make sure you're not having any future leaks. You could get a whole bag like this for probably only a couple dollars. It's not even a big deal, but it's well worth it to avoid any future leaks. So let me go ahead and put my plug in and we'll finish this up. There's just six bolts, but I put them in the same order I took them out on the floor. So like the top right, the right, the two bottom, because they're different sizes. So I put them in that order so I don't forget which way they go back on. So once you pull your outer plate off like this, there should be enough slack in your line that you can use your finger to kind of push this, this piece right here, push it back, and there should be enough slack in the line to pull this right here off of this hook because it's just basically like a little bracket that hooks onto this hook. Once you do that, then you can start loosening this up and taking your line out. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so we went ahead and we got our outer housing removed. Then this little piece right here is what is attached to the edge of this. All you gotta do is pop it down and pop it off. And then this can pull right out of this piece right here once you unscrew it from there. So once you do that, your whole clutch cable is ready to be pulled back through. If there's any zip ties holding it in place, make sure you remove the zip ties. But basically, you're gonna just put everything back together the same way you took it apart with the new extended clutch cable. Okay, so we got the new extended cable screwed into the side. We pulled it through, we put our little bracket on the edge of the wire and we hooked it back on our spring-loaded housing right there. So now we're pretty much ready to route this wire from the end down through behind the pipes, up along the bottom of the bike, up behind the front of the actual frame here, and wrap it up around the side to where we could hook it back on to our grip. So once I get all that done, I'll put a little bit more blue Loctite on those bolts. I'll get this mounted back up against the bike, get that shut, and then we'll go ahead and replace a little fluid here in a little bit. But let me just go ahead and start doing that and we'll be right back. Okay, so we got our outer plate mounted back on. Everything's good to go, everything's tightened down. I did use some blue Loctite on the bolts and we're good to go there. Okay, so we're gonna start tackling these wires now, which is not really that hard. It's just a little time consuming, but it's not bad if you kind of know what you're doing. So what you wanna do is kind of separate some of these kits. So like these ones right here or for the throttle by wire extension over here. So I'll kind of set those out of the way with that. So then I'm left with these two control harnesses right here. In this bag here are these two sets of extension wires. One has the single harness at the end, which is gonna go with this one here, okay? And then this one has the dual harness at the end, which is gonna go with this one that has the two harnesses. So the best thing to do is either try to unplug these wires from this harness or the quickest, easiest thing to do is just get some wire snips and snip them off right here, strip off some of the cover, and then go ahead and strip off some of the covers on this wire here, solder the two together, and there's your extended wire there. Do the same thing with this kit here, same thing with this kit here, and then all your wires will be extended. It's not that hard. Now, many people like to just do the traditional soldering for this, but I tend to use products like these. These are those little fittings that you slide over your wires, and you can heat that solder up with a heat gun or some type of mini blowtorch like this just to get that heated up and shrink-wrapped. So let me start getting this prepared, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so to get this started, we're just going to go ahead and cut this tip off right here. 
just like that. Okay, so I just basically pulled back some of that wire loom on the factory switch here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and open up my wires a little bit like that. Okay, I'm just stripping off the edges here. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our new extension wire harness here and we're gonna strip off the ends here. Okay, so now we got the ends stripped off from our actual controls and then we got the ends stripped off over here coming off of the extension kit. Okay, I'm gonna grab one of my fittings here and slide it over the wire, just like that. Okay, then we're gonna take our white wire on the control with the red stripe. And what we're gonna do is open the wire up to like a Y. So take maybe like half the wires, okay? Just like this, kind of like a Y, just like that, okay? And then we have this Y over here and you're basically gonna cross them like this. And you're gonna leave about an eighth of an inch between the two plastics touching. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it across like this, pinch your wires and start twisting them. And what that does is that creates a nice splice right there in the middle. Okay, just like that. Then what we can do is we take our little fitting that we put on before, you slide that over top of the wires where they meet, and then you solder that, just like that. Okay, let's get, in, get that soldered. So what we're doing is we're gonna heat it up all around, get that solder really melted, and then we're gonna go over top of the edges. And now if you see here, your fitting has now been soldered and shrink wrapped in the same time. So now we're good with that one. So now I just gotta do the same thing to the next three wires. Okay, so we just went ahead and we got all of our four wires here soldered and shrink wrapped. So now all I have to do is wrap this existing wire loom around this end. We'll go ahead and electrical tape it. I'll slide this little bit of wire loom here over top of those. I'll shrink wrap that. And then we'll add a little bit more electrical tape and then we'll be done with that harness. Okay, so we got the first control done. Everything has been extended. It has been soldered and shrink wrapped and wire loomed. And again, I'll add a little bit more electrical tape here at the end. Now we gotta do the same exact thing. We're just basically matching up all of these wires to those wires. So again, let me go ahead and do the same exact process on those. And then once we're done with that, I'll be doing the same exact process on the throttle by wire. So let me take care of all of that and we'll be right back. Okay, so real quick, what I do is I just tie a piece of ribbon to a nut just like this, and then I'll drop the nut down through the top opening here to fish the ribbon through the bottom. Then what I did was I took my throttle by wire and I pulled it through the bottom opening here, and then I taped the throttle by wire to my control wire end, and I staggered the harnesses a little bit so they didn't bulk up, and I taped them up real good. And then I just took some thin gauge wire like this, and I routed it through the bar before I actually put those wires through. Then what I did was I took some electrical tape and taped the ends of both harnesses to the end of the wire and I pulled it through. Now sometimes what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of grease, but just a little bit to lubricate the cable so that when you're pulling the wire through the bottom, it pops out the bottom like that. So as you can see here, that's all I did was I just took a little bit of duct tape and a little electrical tape and just taped my cable to the harness and pulled it all through the bars. Right side's always the hardest because you have the throttle by wire and your wire harness there. But once you take your time and pull it through, so you're basically feeding it from the top up here while you're pulling it down here and eventually you can get it through the bar. That's the easiest way I would say to do it. 
So again, I gotta tuck this wire through a little bit more and then and pull this wire through a little bit more and then the right side will be done. And then I just have to do the same thing to the left side, which again is a little easier because there's only one small cable we have to pull through the bottom. So let me go ahead and finish doing that and we'll be right back. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is move on to extending our front brake lines. Now, this little cap here on the front, just kind of folds up and it was zip tied. So I just cut the zip ties and the cap folds back. And then you just pop your brake line bracket here out of this bracket right here. It just literally pops right out. Then we're gonna have to follow it down to our calibers here and take a wrench and unloosen these bolts here to take this line here off of that down there on both sides. And then the whole entire unit will pop right out. And then we'll have to go ahead and put the new cables on which look like this. So we got this new bracket right here that we have to put on and replace. So it's gonna look just like that. So the one line right here where my thumb is goes up across the top and then the two lines over here and then over here are gonna be right here and over there. So basically all we have to do is take the existing kit apart and we're gonna put the new kit on attaching the new hoses here. So we got your main extended hose that's gonna come off the top over here that goes up to your actual brake lever here. That's the extended one. And then we have the two shorter ones that are gonna go from this pipe right here down to your calibers again. So it's not that hard. We just have to basically swap all the wires out. And yes, after we get this all connected to the bars, we're gonna have to flush some new brake fluid through the lines, and I'm just gonna use a Mighty Vac pump to pull it through, and we'll go over that here shortly. So let me start doing all this, and we'll be right back. So to put everything back together, it's pretty simple. Again, you just take a wrench, and this whole entire piece right here is just basically one bolt. Once you loosen that, it pops off. You're gonna have a copper ring at the top. You're gonna have your brake line and then a copper ring at the bottom and then it bolts in. So just make sure you use the new copper rings that come with the kit to do it like that. So again, you're gonna put a copper ring at the bottom of this bolt, then your brake line, then a copper ring and then bolt it down nice and tight. Up here, this just basically screws on to this brake line right here. So I put a small dab of blue Loctite just on the threads, tighten it down. Do the same on both sides, and then the same up at the top right here. Again, everything just bolts right down to the brake line. And now we're ready with our extended brake line. So let me finish this up, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so so far so good. So we got the 18 inch ape hanger bars installed. I am using the factory clamp over here. So these are one and a quarter inch bars that taper down to one inch down here at your riser bracket. So I got all that done. I got all of the wires pulled through and I have them plugged back in down at the bottom. And I do have all of my controls mounted for now. Now I don't have the exact position of where I want the controls. Once I make sure everything is good and everything's hooked up correctly and everything works, then I'll go back through and sit on the bike and put my hands up on the bars and figure out where I need to adjust these controls, whether I need to tilt them forward a little bit or tilt them back a little bit. I'll make that adjustment here in a little bit. But so far, so good. Everything's hooked up. So let's go ahead, make sure we're in neutral, which we are. Good to go with that. Let's go ahead over here. That's a good sign. Moment of truth. Okay, so now we know everything's good, everything starts, everything's good to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is start getting my headlights all hooked back up. Now eventually I thought about sanding them down and using an etch primer and then painting them black. I still might do that in the near future, but for now I just wanna go ahead and get all of this hooked back up to make sure everything's working and everything's functioning properly. Then once I do all that, we're gonna to have to come up here and start bleeding our brake caliber. And I'll probably be using this down here. One of these Mighty Vac pumps. So again, this right here works really good. You hook up your little reservoir tank to the manual pump here, hook up your hose, 
down on your nipple over here. And basically you open up your brake lid up here and you, you keep filling in some brake fluid up top while you're down below pumping the Mighty Vac gun, which is sucking the brake fluid through the brake lines. During this whole process, I have to keep coming up here to make sure I'm topping it off with brake fluid because again, you don't wanna suck air down through here. You wanna suck fresh brake fluid through here. So we're gonna get into all that here shortly, but for now, the bars are hooked up, everything works. So let me go ahead and start working on the front headlight assembly, and then we'll come back here shortly. So I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, so so far so good. We got the headlight assembly mounted back on. We have our two switch wires right here. We got those plugged in inside. Now, if any of you watched my last video, when I originally put the T-bars on, I cut my factory top bracket, which I have it over here somewhere. Okay, I cut it and I ended up not using it. So I ended up buying a used one off eBay and I had the guy powder coat it black for me. So this right here is an exact replacement for the chrome one that I had over there that I cut for the last bar set up. So I have a new top cover here, got it screwed in, everything's mounted and good to go. Because eventually I probably am going to black out this front end a little bit more. So I don't know if I'm keeping these headlights on or not, but that's at a later date. So once you get this top plate put back on, the last thing you need to do is put that little screw up at the top. So I go ahead and I put the nut right here in a set of needle nose pliers. And then I wrap a little electrical tape around the needle nose pliers, put a little piece along the back so that this nut doesn't fall through. Then I basically just slide my needle nose pliers under right here to where I can get it lined up underneath. And then I just screw my bolt in from the top. So let me go ahead and put my last couple bolts on. I'll hook up my last couple wires for the uh, turn signal lights and all of that. I'll put my headlight back in and then we'll move on to the next step. So I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, so we're getting ready to bleed our front brake lines and I have the Mighty Vac hoses all ready to go. And I took the little black covers off right here is where I'm gonna connect the hose and we're gonna do one side at a time. Now, I took the reservoir lid off. Now, one thing you might wanna to try to pick up eventually is one of these brake fluid testers. They work really good for testing your brake fluid to see how old it is and if there's any water starting to accumulate. So basically, once you take the lid off the tip here, you have these two little prongs. You're just gonna basically hold the top in like this and turn it on. You see right now, it's measuring 0% water. But if you see any of these lights light up to 1% or 2% or even 3%, 3 or 4% is really bad. You don't want that brake fluid. If it's 1%, that just means maybe keep an eye on it. If it gets to 2%, that means you should really be changing that fluid. But again, once you hit three or four, you better make sure you change that fluid. So I went ahead and I just turned my lights out in my garage. That way you can see the green light better. As you can see, it's lighted up on 0% right now. So let's go ahead and stick it in the brake fluid here just to test it. See how it's like red, measuring red? Right there, see how it's measuring? It's actually about 2% right now. Take it out, it's zero. Put it back in, 2%. So this is basically telling me right now that that brake fluid is pretty bad to begin with. So what we're gonna do is basically drain the fluid out of the top just to get that reservoir empty. Then I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull some of the brake fluid through the line by using my Mighty Vac pump to pump it out. Then we're gonna come back up here, fill it up with fresh brake fluid and start using the Mighty Vac to pull it down through. And we're just gonna keep doing this rotation until we get brake fluid pulled down through to both calibers there and making sure we don't drain that fully at the top. We gotta keep standing up, pouring more in, pumping it, letting it pull through, standing up, checking it, pouring more in. So it works better when you have two people, but if you're gonna do it by yourself, you have to keep checking because you cannot let this reservoir go empty while you're trying to pump it out and bleed the air out the bottom. So let me start doing that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my Mighty Vac hooked up down below, right back here. Then you're gonna take a little wrench. It's gonna to have to basically crack that open just a little bit. So just basically maybe like a quarter of a turn, just enough to where you start to see fluid coming through. And then we're gonna to have to come back up here, pour more fluid in and just keep pumping the Mighty Vac and paying attention that a reservoir doesn't get filled up, but just keep slowly doing this. Don't do this fast. Take your time, do a little bit at a time, and eventually the Mighty Vac pump is going to keep pulling the brake fluids down through the line and down out here. Once you start seeing the fresh fluid coming down through the line and there's no air bubbles, then you could go ahead, shut your Mighty Vac off, tighten your valve, put your cover back on, and we're gonna bleed the other side. So let me do that and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I went ahead and I kept pouring fluid in from the top. This is fresh brake fluid, which I have right here. So what I did was I had my Mighty Vac hose hooked up right up top of here. Then I got a small like 10 millimeter wrench and put it right at the tip, not down below because that's what holds your brake line on. It's right here, right at the top, right there. You just wanna crack that open a little bit and that'll allow the brake fluid to start bleeding out the top. So you're gonna pump your Mighty Vac, maybe up to like where it says five or the 10, but you don't wanna to go too much because you don't wanna do it too fast. So I usually pump it up to maybe the five and let it slowly bleed out. But then I keep coming up here to make sure this doesn't drain completely empty because then what you're gonna do is gonna suck more air back down through your brake line. So again, some people do it different ways. I like to pump it from the bottom. Some people actually like to get like a syringe, hook it up and push the brake fluid in from the bottom and push the air out from the top because obviously bubbles and water are gonna rise to the top. Either way works, but you have to bleed them either way to make sure your front brakes work. See, before I did this, my brake lever here would come all the way to the handle. Now it's about right there, which is right where I want it. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll just gently tap my front brake a little bit just to kind of pump out any possible air bubbles from the lines. If you're tapping your brake lever like this and you're still seeing bubbles coming out the top, that means that you there's still air in your lines. But if you could sit here and pump your front brake and no air bubbles are coming up, that means you pretty much have all the air out of the lines. Then I'll take my brake fluid tester one more time, turn it on, okay, it's lit at zero. I'll put it back into fresh there and you can see it's still at zero. That's what we want. So again, you wanna have nice fresh brake fluid in here and you wanna make sure you pump out all of your air bubbles. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna put my rubber gasket and my reservoir lid back on, tighten it all up, pump it a little bit more, and then we're gonna get this all wrapped up. So let me finish this up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're finally done. So this is basically what it looks like. I got my windshield put back on. Now eventually I'm probably going to tint this windshield just to darken it out a little bit. And then I probably will eventually be sanding down and then etch priming and painting the headlight assembly and some of the turn signal lights black just to add a little bit more black to the bike. But so far the 18 inch ape hangers turned out great. This is what they look like on a side view. Looks real good. Again, everything works, everything looks real good. This is what they look like here. But yeah, looks real nice. Let's go ahead and start it up. Okay, neutral, good. But there you go, the headlights work, turn signals work, everything looks real good, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. Okay, everybody, so there you go. So we went ahead and we swapped out the handlebar setup on my 2016 Harley Davidson Road King with a set of 18 inch ape hangers. Now these ape hangers here are an inch and a quarter in diameter that taper down to one inch at the center knurling area where you connect it to your riser clamps. But overall, everything fit great, everything worked great. The burly 16 inch wire and cable extension kit works great for these 18 inch handlebars because again, the 16 inch kit gives you plenty of space for running 16 inch bars. But as you can see, there's still plenty of space to run 18 inch bars with a 16 inch burly cable extension kit. Now, if you went with an 18 inch burly cable extension kit, you're just gonna have a little bit more slack and what I've found is when you have too much slack, it just makes it look a little sloppy and hard to kind of tuck wires and cables out of the way. But the 16 inch burly cable kit works great with these 18 inch bars and I'm really happy with everything. But that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button to like this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you, I truly appreciate you all. And as always, see you in the next video.